Hello and welcome back to the Terminal Demo Series. I'm Hannah with Lightning Labs, and this is a series where we walk through using Terminal, your all-in-one node management tool from health checks, auto fees, loop pool, and more. And in this video, we'll talk about a very, very useful and very, very popular feature of Terminal, which is, of course, Loop. It's an incredibly useful tool for liquidity management. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Loop or liquidity management, it's outside the scope of this demo video to explain it, but we have some fabulous docs that will walk you through it. And you can check those out here at docs.lightning.engineering. And of course, I'll put links in the video description. All right, so let's come back to our node here. We're connected to one of our testnet nodes. So assuming that you are already familiar with liquidity management and what Loop can do for you, let's just go have a look at how to make use of Loop via terminal. And we're going to look at a number of different ways to use Loop, including Loop Out, Loop In, and both manual and auto loops. So if you know exactly what demo you're looking to see, you can go ahead and have a look at the timestamps in the description and jump right to that. But what we'll do here is walk through them one by one, starting with how to do manual loop outs and loop ins, and then we'll talk all about auto loop, which is very, very cool. So let's come over to the loop tab. And we'll come back to this stuff up here when we talk about auto loop. But right now we're going to talk about just doing manual loops on a per channel basis. So first let's look here. At what we have, we have different options. We could have a look at channels that have where the inbound is low, right? So this one here, you can see all of the funds in this channel over on our side, which means there aren't any funds over here that can sort of flow into us, right? We can't like receive payments on this channel. So this is low inbound, right? We can't have any inbound payments here. And this is where we would want to do a loop out. And we can also look at low where channels where the outbound is low, right? So this is where all of the, the funds in the channel are on our peers' side and not on our side, so we can't send funds out. And here we might want to do a loop in. So let's start by looking at this uh, inbound low so we can set up a loop out. Cool. So here we have this channel, and what we'll do is we'll drag this over to, say, about here. Like maybe that's where we'd like it to be, right in the middle. Let's want, say, a balanced channel. So this is going to do a loop out for us, and we'll click Next and walk through these options. All right, so here we could select Auto Loop if we wanted to set this up on a recurring basis for this channel, but here we're just going to do a one-time manual loop. Well, and we can look at all of these different options, right? This shows us the estimated fees that we'll pay. And there's a number of different fees to keep in mind here. There's the loop service fee, um, there's on-chain fees, there's light, lightning routing fees that we might want to think about, but you can take a look at all those estimates here. And then we can even go to the advanced options, which is cool. We could add a particular address that we wanted those on-chain funds when they come back to us to go to. But for the moment, we're just gonna leave this as it is, say right or estimated fees are just fine, and we're going to hit submit. Cool, look at that, we've submitted a loop. Cool. So now let's look at channels where the outbound is low and we can have a look at doing a loop in. So let's just look through here and we'll select one of these channels here. How about, uh, let's go this one here. So again, let's say, hey, we want a roughly balanced channel for our particular use case. So we're going to go with this. Aha, look at this. You need more sats in your on-chain wallet to complete a loop uh, of a larger size, right? So when we do a loop in, right, what we're doing is we are sending funds on-chain to the loop node, and then it's sending us funds on the Lightning Network. In this case, we can't do this loop because we don't have enough on-chain funds. So. There we go, I set it a little bit lower. Now we do have enough on-chain funds to conduct this loop in, so let's give it a try. We're gonna do one-time manual. All right, so once again, let's have a look at these options. We get an estimate of fees and we get some advanced options here. We can change our confirmation target, which is basically how quickly we want this to go through. And of course that will affect the fee rate that we pay. So if we we're happy to wait for a little bit and pay a lower fee, then we can set the confirmation target a lot higher. So let's push submit. 
Hey, there we go. We submitted a loop in. All right, now let's have a talk about auto loop. Auto loop is super cool because it makes it so easy to manage the liquidity on your node by just setting some automations, which will take care of a lot of things for you. And what's really, really cool about auto loop is that you can set auto loops at three different levels. So at a node level, right? So if we have a look at this here. This shows us in our node, like our total um, the total we have on our side of the channels and the total we have on our peer side, right? Our, our max outbound and our max inbound, right? So we could set auto loop to try and balance this on a node level. And we could do that right here by dragging this over to where we like it. Or we could set this at a peer level. So we can come down and have a look at like, look at this peer of mine. Apparently this node has seven different channels with this peer, right? So we can have a look at all those channels and I could set auto loops at a, a channel level, but I could also set it at a peer level, right? By just adjusting this slider here and setting it with this particular peer. And then of course, we could also set these loops um, on an individual channel basis. So that's really cool. It gives us all kinds of different options. You know, whatever, you can use whatever option is most appropriate for your node and your use case. But Let's go ahead and set some auto loops so we can have a look at what that looks like. Also note up here at the top, this autopilot button, we can push this right now. You can see we just have the auto fees options because we don't have any auto loops set up and we haven't enabled auto fees. You can go watch our video on auto fees if you'd like to see more about that. So let's go set up an auto loop and then we can look, we can talk through the budget we set up for that and how that works and the various different features. So let's go back to this channel and see if we can set up some auto loops. In this case, an auto loop out. So here we go, we say, right, we're gonna try and keep this channel roughly balanced. So let's go next button here. And this time we're gonna select auto loop. All right, so let's have a look at all of these different settings. These are our budget settings and this will be important. All right, so minimum loop size, right? So saying, hey, don't loop until there's this this much liquidity to loop to loop out, right? And this is the maximum fee I'm willing to pay for that swap. And then this is the total budget amount. So this budget says, hey, I'm willing to pay this many Satoshis for all of the fees, right? So that includes fees to the loop node, on-chain fees and lightning fees, right? So all fees that I'm willing to pay, I'm willing to pay this many Satoshis for fees and I'm willing to do that every seven days, right? So I can set whether or not this is a recurring budget, right? So it'll happen every seven days or I can come down here and select different time frames for that. I could do one day, three days, seven days, 14 days, or 28 days. So lots of different options there. So you can set your you know, fee preferences, whoever you like for your node. For the moment, I'm just gonna accept these defaults and we're gonna move along. Okay. Cool. It gives us this information, this is the size, these are our fee rates and we click submit. Awesome. And you can see here that we can stop this at any time we want. Um, we can see what's currently happening and we can see how many loops have recently been performed. And then we can come here and look at the history of this too, if we'd like. So we get a ton of information. And you can go down and this is a, a loop out, all right, an auto loop out that we set, but we would be very, very similar workflow here if we're doing an auto loop in, or if we're setting this on a node basis or a peer basis. And then you can come back at any time and click up here on this autopilot button. And now you see that we don't just see auto fees, but we also have auto loop. And when you come back and click on this, this allows us to pause our auto loops at any time we like. And we can come in here and adjust our uh, budget settings or our preferences or our budget reoccurrence or change our advanced options as well. So you can come here um, at any time you'd like and adjust this. But as always, don't forget to click the save button. 
Awesome. So let's just briefly recap what we did in this video. In this video, we discussed one of the most popular features of Terminal, which is Loop, because uh, it's wildly useful for liquidity management. And we just showed you how to make use of some of these Loop features, whether we're doing a manual loop out or a manual loop in, or we're taking advantage of the auto loop functionality, which can be done on a node level, a peer level, or a channel level. And there's all kinds of really cool advantages advanced features that you can take advantage of here. As always, don't forget to check out the docs at docs.lightning.engineering. Thanks.